We really have not seen any demand normalization. We've not seen uh, consumer spending abate. It is pretty clear that we have you know, higher prices in a variety of different places, uh, you know, across rents, uh, across you know, goods, services, and obviously a part of that is a result of, of labor shortages that are pushing up uh, incomes. So one of the things I wanted to say is that we can expect certainly for the next you know, several months, probably three or four months, uh, much higher inflation than uh, is desirable. What we're now seeing, though, is a return after emergency support has been uh, uh, taken away, a return to work and spending wage income, which should now correlate to consumption. And basically, we expect, therefore, consumption growth rates over the course of the next six months to normalize as the consumers stop spending that you know, bonanza that they receive uh, uh, from government. So a corresponding normalization right, in, in goods that consumers demand and therefore slower uh, inflation for those goods is what we're expecting. Rates have continued to go down, obviously due to the pandemic, and they're likely to stay down. So right now we're in a situation where we think that investors are not gonna be properly paid for holding you know, their bonds. That's why we remain overweight in equities. One of the other reasons why rates have been low, and we wrote a little bit about it, is that the economic outlook for China is also negative. And this self-imposed economic slowdown is basically going to be growth inhibiting for China. And China is a huge part of the world market. So that's another reason why we are hopeful in 2022 that we're going to see lower inflation due to the fact of this normalization of the economy and China's impact upon uh, our, our GDP globally. The conference that has taken place on climate in Glasgow is incredibly important. And I thought it would be useful for Harlan to give us some background. The COP26 is an important conference and it's coming at a time following um, the IPCC's report this summer on climate change in which they called it uh, climate change to be inequivocally caused by humans and the UN Secretary General summarized it as a code red for humanity. There was a, a surprise announcement um, from the US and China committing to, you know, the two largest uh, emitters of emissions, committing to greater collaboration on reducing emissions very important, I think, signal to the markets, um, very important signal to investors that there is collaboration between the two countries. The idea that, you know, that this is going to become important to investors is only going to accelerate because of how people are going to evaluate companies and their ability to produce their goods and services in a carbon neutral way. Those that do earlier, I think, as I mentioned, will be benefited. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, right? If, if you're going to have to start to pay as a company for your emissions, your costs will rise. And so those companies that are the most efficient in terms of their emissions that have made the transition, um, you know, even companies that are committing to a transition, but who have found ways to produce their goods and services with greater efficiency will have fewer of those costs. Climate change is gonna be a major driver of innovation, a major driver of what is gonna be fundamental policy change. As investors, we have two roles to play. One, we can actually change policy by how we go about investing. And two, we can actually invest in companies that are gonna be benefiting by the, the speed with which and the um, intelligence with which they actually adopt green strategies across their entire uh, businesses.